We now move over to talking about defense production. Make in India and self-reliance have now, as I said, become a partner in the sense of for self-reliance, Make in India is absolutely necessary. And particularly when you're talking about critical industries like defense, we need to be self-reliant where we really can be. Of course, armed forces require best of equipments. They need some of the latest uh, technology-driven uh, uh, equipments. Uh, some high-tech equipments are required, which have to be imported. They can be imported. And it continues. We are uh, seeing very good uh, latest weaponry coming also. But some of those which are being produced in India can be bought in India. And therefore, we have now uh, come to a conclusion that we shall notify. This is done with the consultation with the Department of Military Affairs. We shall notify a list of weapons and platforms which shall be not allowed for import, but we shall have them bought from India. So the import of this listed set of equipments shall not be allowed. They shall be banned. And every year, this list will be increased because more capacities which come to be recognized, which meet the standards which meet the different standards will be obtained from India. As they say, the defense is uh, general staff uh, qualitative requirements. The GSQRs for weapons and platforms will all be honored. But those list of items which get notified can only be purchased from India. Indigenization of some imported spares will also be given priority. For years, we have been producing uh, spares which are good enough for even those imported vectors, imported weaponry, imported platforms. Unless we are able to do that, the spares are also something which India probably can produce but are getting imported. So indigenization of imported spares, then for all this, a budget provision, a separate budget provision will also be given for domestic capital procurement. So this is going to be something with which the defense can make sure that their import bill can come down. This is done in consultation with the Department of Military Affairs. And this will be an important step towards making sure that Indian producers of defense equipments which are absolutely meeting with the standards which the armed forces would want will be purchased from India. The next step in defense production related reform is to improve the autonomy, accountability, and efficiency in ordnance supplies which are being made by the ordnance factories. And for this, we intend to corporatize ordnance factory boards. I like to emphasize here, corporatize, cor corporatization is not private. Privatization. It doesn't mean that the ordnance factory boards are going to be privatized. No, they're not being privatized. But corporatized, they will be. We want them to be better managed. We also eventually hope that uh, they will get listed in the stock market. Ordinary Indian citizens can also buy shares in them. And through that, we expect that the ordnance factory boards and their processes, decision making, output, performance, all of them will be transparent for the Indian citizens. So ordnance factory boards will be corporatized, not privatized. I want to underline that, and I want media friends to please uh, differentiate between corporatization and privatization. The next set of things about defense production is that FDI limits are being raised from 49% to 
Of course, it will have the security clearances and everything else, uh, as always. And then we'll also have a mechanism established so that time-bound defense procurement processes happen. Where there will be a project management unit set up. Support will be given for contract management purposes. Then, we are, as I said earlier, a realistic setting for the general, stiffen, uh, general staff qualitative requirements, the GSQRs as they are known, of weapons and platforms will be made because sometimes unrealistic uh, quality requirements are established and quite a lot of time is spent in searching for suppliers who will meet all those requirements, you end up with just one supplier, and just buying it from one supplier is not permitted, and then you do the entire circle all over again. So realistic setting of uh, qualitative requirements is something on which we'll place emphasis, and above all, overalling of the trial and testing processes. Yes, we understand India is a country which has different climatic and geospatial uh, requirements, tropical, coastal, Himalayan, high altitude, and everything else, but we still need to be far more efficient in trial and testing of procedures.